going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So in this episode, we're wrapping up the last couple episodes of Killing the Resurrection series. This is actually going to be the last episode for a little while. There's going to be a couple episodes that are going to trickle on the channel here in the not-too-distant future. A couple upgrades that I didn't have a chance to even finish. Even right now, they're still not done yet. But I'm going to get them wrapped up here, hopefully, in the next month or so. And then I'll go ahead and get the video sliced and diced up, and you'll all be able to see how that went together, too. But if you're new to the channel, what in the hell is Killing the Resurrection series? What, what, the, what the hell does that mean? Well, about a year and a half ago, I blew the engine in my Killing the Megatron. Oh, Killing it, bro. Yeah, not my finest hour. It kind of freaking sucked. I was a little down and out. But we took that negativity, turned it into positivity, took the killing a mega truck to a whole new level. She ain't never even motherfucking seen before. We well, did everything under the sun. We rebuilt the axles. We put a brand new, fully built, twin turbo, thousand horsepower, SoCal diesel Duramax in her. We put a freaking roll cage in it, put new sound system stuff in it. We did all kinds of really neat stuff. So if y'all are interested in mega trucks whatsoever, I definitely recommend you go through and check out some of them episodes. Pretty interesting stuff. I go through time lapse a lot of it. You can see exactly how it went together. I explain a lot of the parts that we used, a lot of the different reasons why I did the different upgrades that I did. Some pretty interesting stuff. So if y'all are into mega trucks whatsoever, definitely recommend you hit the subscribe button down there on my channel name. That way you get notified when I upload any other videos. And y'all can go back and check out some of them Killing It Resurrection videos. And not to mention, y'all will be able to see the videos I'm going to be putting on the channel. We're going to start putting old girl to the test. Now that we got her on this whole new level, we got to see what she's made of. Got to freaking let her rip, tater chip, you know, hit that freaking go pedal and freaking drop a hammer. It's going to be real mother freaking bitch. And we don't just do mega truck stuff either. We got bikini contest videos on there. We got mud bogging videos on there. We got truck tug of war videos, a little bit of boat, a little bit of fishing stuff. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you can freaking be a part of the action yourselves. But anyways, like I said, in this video, we're going to go through and do the initial fire up. This is what y'all been waiting for. The initial fire up of our brand new fully built SoCal diesel Twin turbo, 1,000 horsepower Duramax. Thing is, mother freaking sick. Now, if y'all follow me on any of the social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram, y'all already know Killing is actually already resurrected. I'm just going through and catching up on all the videos. That way, y'all don't get gypped on the content and y'all can see how everything went together. So, obviously, if you've seen any of the videos, ah, uh, yeah, she's running like a mother freaking scalded dog. But it wasn't overnight, okay? The initial fire up definitely did not go as planned. Y'all are going to see exactly what I'm talking about here in just a couple seconds. So, hope y'all enjoy the video. And as always, thanks for watching, y'all. All right, y'all, so I did time lapse putting all the fluids in it, but looking at it now, it's boring as hell, so I'm not gonna bore y'all with it. And ended up taking about eight and a half gallons of coolant, took about two and a half gallons of engine oil, and it took like right around five gallons of transmission fluid. And that was the extent of putting all the fluids in the engine. Once all the fluids were in there, it was time to go ahead and start bleeding out the fuel system, because remember, everything is brand freaking new. Basically, I mean, there was probably a little bit of residual fuel in the fuel lines coming up to the engine bay, but from there, going into all the injectors and everything, everything was brand new, had a bunch of air in it, had no fuel in it. So we went ahead and turned on the fuel pump, went ahead and started hitting the bleeder valve and started bleeding all the air out of the system. This is what you do. Alright, y'all, we just got all the fluid in here. Priming the uh, fuel system. Trying to get all the air bubbles out because she's been sitting a good little minute and had her entire body revamped. There we go, guys. More? All right, y'all, so right about there is where things started not going quite as planned. This is definitely the first engine that I've ever been involved with, like, completely rebuilding. So I don't know how much of this was normal and how much of it was because we had some uh, unforeseen circumstances that were going on. But, uh, yeah, we sat there clicking that thing over a lot more times. <laughs> She's 
coming to life. Again? Yep. Oh, yes, you got fuel. Should I keep letting it chop like that? A little bit. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. So basically that just kept happening and happening and happening. But it was so close to firing up that we didn't think there was anything wrong. We we're just like, Ah, well, I mean, maybe there's just a little bit of air still stuck in there. So I cut out about another seven rounds of me trying to fire it up like that. And then finally we're like, all right, something is going on here. Let's check the oil pressure. Yeah. It shot up when I got off at that time. It shot off? It, the oil pressure shot up to 30. not firing so mr daryl has got his fancy dancy <laughs> computer find out what's going on an old girl here she wants the light she's sending diesel smoke all inside of brian's shop she's not quite firing yet i'm not sure why i think she's just full of air but we shall see momentarily Like that, just see it, you see how it responds. If it gets pissed off, don't like it, let off of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, as y'all can probably tell, that was not what I was expecting her to sound like, and I don't think that's what y'all expected her to sound like either. look of a very confused man i didn't know whether to be excited or nervous as hell because i i mean i'll be totally up front with you this is a racing diesel engine so i didn't know at all what to expect my first thought was oh, this isn't what i was expecting it to sound like but is that what you run into with a racing diesel engine like this i know generally like in the in the tractor pulling and all that sort of stuff those engines do sound a little funky when they're cold starting them and getting them warmed up and you don't really start hearing the real throaty and bitching badassness of it until the RPMs are up and that engine's hot and ready to rip. But that still was not quite what I was expecting. So I, yeah, I was, I didn't know what to make of it. So started talking with Mr. Darrell a little bit more and he was definitely on the pressure. No, this thing should not sound like this. This sounds, something is seriously goofed up. So we went ahead and got it fired up again to where it was running and I took a video. So I could send it to Mr. Mark over at Danny Brook Performance and I could send it to Mr. Guy over at SoCal Diesel. And so they could reassure me like, all right, is this, is this, is this supposed to be like this? Because I don't think it's supposed to be like this. Is this supposed to be like this?
right after we took that video, we decided to go ahead and wrap it up and call it a night because it was pushing about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I had to be at work at 5. I had some things going on at work. So, uh, yeah, I was going to get about 30, 45 minutes of sleep. But uh, as we were wrapping everything up, we noticed that we were actually spitting diesel fuel all over the roof of the truck. Um, I don't I don't know why I didn't even realize it was getting on the windshield. I think it was because I was just so focused on everything else, trying to pay attention to the sound and everything, making sure nothing was going to go catastrophically wrong where I had to shut it off really quick. But we looked down the roof of the truck, and she was spitting an excessive amount of diesel fuel all over the place. So then our buddies, Mr. Danny and Daryl, they were both helping me kind of get this initial fire up going. Decided, all right, let's get it running one more time. We're going to go ahead and hit all the cylinders with an infrared thermometer and see if we can tell, like, what the hell is going on. Maybe there's, it sounds like there's a couple fouled up cylinders. And... Yeah, that's exactly what it was seeming like. Once they hit it all, I forgot what the temperatures were, but once they hit it all, there was three cylinders that were excessively cooler than the remaining cylinders. Whew. All right, y'all, I am freaking dragging. As luck would have it, Mr. Daryl's got some stuff he's got going on like the rest of this week and next week and the next little bit. So we're kind of forced, we, I'm at his mercy a little bit. I got, I got to work on it when he's available. He's helping me out, not the other way around. But, um... And then we had some stuff going on at my work. So I had to be here at five o'clock this morning. So running on about 45 minutes sleep after working a 12 hour day at work yesterday, working on the truck for a lot of hours. And it looks like I got another 12 hour day today. So anyways, uh, we concluded last night. I went and we hit, every, we hit all the cylinders with a infrared thermometer. And yeah, it's very obvious that we've got a couple cylinders that are fouled up for whatever reason. I think three of the cylinders are like right around like 90 degrees, 100 degrees. And then the other five were like upwards of like 140, 150. So there's definitely a significant difference in the temperature. So that's telling us that those cylinders are, they're either not firing or something's going on. And I think they're getting flooded with fuel, honestly, because of the amount of fuel that was all over the roof of the truck when we were cleaning up. I was so damn tired. I didn't record any of it. I figured, you know what? I'll just explain it. Yeah, there's like diesel. So it looks like kind of like soot because the exhaust mixes with the diesel fuel. But it's mainly fuel that was all over the roof of the truck. It was all getting spit out the exhaust. So I'm pretty sure a couple of cylinders are not firing. I don't know if there's maybe a couple of those injectors are getting stuck open. Something goofy is going on. So I took that video and I'm going to send that to Mr. Guy over at SoCal Diesel. I'm going to send it over to Mark over at Danfield Performance, the guy that wrote the tunes for the truck. Maybe they can give me a little insight as to what in the hell's going on because thing sounds like a goofed up tractor. It sounds, it, I'm not going to lie, I'm starting to have a little PTSD from when she blew up. That's what she sounds kind of like she did when she was goofed up over at Iron Horse Mud Ranch like over a freaking year ago. So anyways, I'm going to get in touch with Guy. I'm going to get in touch with uh, Mark. And we'll see if we can figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, we had something seriously goofed up going on. Now the next morning, I went ahead and sent that video to Mr. Mark at Danville Performance and Mr. Guy over at SoCal Diesel. And uh, yeah, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is not what that engine is supposed to be sounding like. And it was actually Mr. Mark that picked up on it first. He actually got back to me before I heard back from Guy. Mark goes, well, hold on. Did you repin the harness? I said, repin the harness? What, what the hell are you talking about, repin the harness? And he goes, no, no, no. That's a SoCal diesel engine. That's got an alternate firing cam. It means you got to repin the harness because it changed the firing order of all the cylinders. He goes, that's exactly why it sounded like that. Bet you if you repin the harness the way it's supposed to be, guarantee it cleans it right up. But right now, the way it is, hell no. Do not try to fire it up anymore. You could cause damage to it if you leave it running too long like that. But you need to get a hold of SoCal and figure out what you need to do to repin that harness. Right about the time I got off the phone with Mr. Mark, my phone was going off Mr. Guy from SoCal Diesel. He goes, Zacho, he goes, uh, did you repin the harness? I said, I just got given the whole 411 on repin the harness, but how do I do that and what needs to be repinned? He goes, well, look at the instructions that came with your motor. I said, bro, there's no instructions with the motor. So something got a little goofed up when my engine got shipped out and the instruction book that's supposed to be with that engine was not with it. And in there is pretty simple and pretty vivid instructions on exactly what you need to do. Basically, you got two big monster plugs that connect the engine wiring harness to the rest of the truck wiring harness. You got to take those plugs apart and you got to repin a couple of the wires. You got to pull a couple of the wires out, change their position on that monster plug, snap them back into the plug and then plug the plugs back together. It's actually pretty easy to do, nothing too complex. But changing those wires drastically changes the way that engine runs, as you all are about to see. All right, y'all, as you can tell, that is not how she was supposed to be running when we fired it up. It's not at all what we were going for. So, Mr. Josh came over and he's helping us repin the main monster plug that connects the engine harness to the truck harness. Because apparently, according to SoCal Diesel, that has to happen because this has an AF cam, which is an alternate firing cam. Makes the, it changes the firing rate of the uh, cylinders. So, once we correct this, 
Hopefully she'll be running like a mother top. Remember where it goes? An open hole. What? There's like a bunch of open holes. Don't put just put in a random one. That's the one that's open over here. All right, y'all, so we followed all of SoCal's instructions. Well, Josh followed all of SoCal's instructions and repinned my harness for me. Now it's time to fire up because she should sound more normal now. We will see here momentarily. Oh, that's way better. That's way better than it was last night. Oh yeah, it was not doing that last night. She's alive, finally! She's living. Oh yeah, old Kellen was finally breathing some freaking fresh air. Oh, Jesus, freaking long time coming, y'all, I'll tell you that. We did a little calculation, I said this one in the earlier episodes too. From the day that the engine blew up, Till that day where she was living and breathing because she actually left Ryan's shop. I think it was like that next day because we had to hurry up and get to the next show. But uh, it was 406 days. So obviously not working on it consistently every single day, but working on it a lot of those days. But 406 days from the day that she blew up to the day she was living and breathing again. What a freaking ordeal that was. But from that point, it was time to start getting it broken in. So Mr. Guy from SoCal Diesel said in order to do that, all I needed to do was put a mild load on the engine drive it around, alternating the RPMs, not revving it all the way up, but alternating the RPMs and have it running for about 30 minutes, bring it back, give it an oil change, oil filter swap, and she's ready to rock and roll. So that's what I did. I didn't time-lapse any of that because I had the roll around wheels on it and it was pretty boring stuff. I mean, it sounded cool, I guess, ish, but I couldn't really even put a load on it because I was on 37 inch tires, which in most cases is a pretty big tire, but for old killing it, those are some baby wheels. So went ahead and drove it around the Mad Scientist Home Laboratory neighborhood and uh, got her all broke in, brought her back, did a little oil change, a little oil filter swap, and she was ready to rock and roll and head on over to the next event. So that's going to wrap up this video, but I hope you all enjoy it. Nah, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't jip y'all like that. Now, if y'all know me, I can't just freaking leave you hanging like that. Okay, we got a little bit of daylight left. So old girl is actually on the trailer right now, but I'm going to go ahead and fire up for y'all. So y'all can get a little taste of what she sounds like when she's actually dialed in and actually working the way she's supposed to. If y'all want to get some more insight onto how she's running, keep an eye on the channel because we're actually getting ready to head on over to Plant Bamboo this weekend. We're going to finally start putting old girl to the test. Last couple of events, I've been kind of taking it easy on her because I was kind of feeling it out. And there's a couple of bugs we needed to work out of the system. And we got those bugs worked out. So now I think we can finally start having some fun with old girl. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I upload those videos after this weekend's over. Because we're going to be doing some truck tug of war warren. We're going to be doing some freaking mud bogging. And we're going to see what this engine's mother freaking made of. But let me go ahead and we'll hop up in the truck. We'll fire up and you guys can kind of get a little taste of what she sounds like. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll fire up the fuel pump. We'll fire up our auxiliary fans for that cooler rack that's underneath the truck. Oh, yeah, by the way, that was another Killing Resurrection series. We built that whole cooler rack, so make sure you don't freaking miss that episode. Make sure you go back and watch it if you didn't already. Go ahead and turn them fans on. Let's hear her talk to us. <laughs> she sounds so good. All right, so I'm not gonna get on her too hard because we obviously just fired up and she's like not, she's not even really warm at all. But listen to these mother freaking turpskis. Oh yeah, 
She sounds mother freaking good, I tell you that. But that is gonna wrap up our initial fire video. I'm thinking the very next video that'll be hitting the channel will hopefully be some stuff from this coming weekend from Plant Bamboo, where we can start really putting this engine to the test. Hopefully we'll do some mud bogging, start doing some truck tug of warren, and y'all can hear them new Duramax freaking bald eagles a screaming. So fingers crossed, hopefully everything goes according to plan without no problems, and I can provide that freaking content to y'all. But uh, that's, that's what I'm freaking thinking. That's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all learned a little bit. And as always, thanks for watching, y'all. If you all enjoyed the video and want to check out future videos, subscribe to our channel. Hit that button right there. While you're at it, hit the like button at the bottom of your screen. You can also check out our website, killingitlifestyle.com. There you can follow the Killing It crew and order your own apparel so everyone will know you're killing it! Killing it.